so this is 7.20 out of Taylor's mechanics book. It says a smooth wire is bent around into the shape of a helix with cylindrical, cylindrical polar coordinates rho equals r, and z is lambda phi, where r and lambda are constants, and the z-axis is vertically up, gravity vertically down. Using z as your general coordinate, write down the Lagrangian for a bead of mass m threaded on the wire. Found the Lagrangian equation, and hence the bead's vertical acceleration z double dot. In the limit that r goes to zero, what is z double dot? Does it make sense? So to begin, let's talk about, this is an, obviously in cylindrical coordinates because of the problem states it uh, explicitly. So for cylindrical coordinates, we can say r, this is a position vector r, is equal to your radius r, cosine phi, r sine phi z. And we do that because this r was our rho. But it mentions in the problem that rho is equal to big R. And it also tells us z is equal to lambda phi. So really right now we have an equation with two variables. We have phi and we have z. But the problem mentions um, using z as your general coordinates. It asks for z double dot. So because of that, we want this in terms of z. So we're going to use this other equation they gave us to find what our variable phi is equal to, which if we divide over, we can see that phi is equal to z divided by lambda. Substituting that in, our position vector r is now capital R, make this a little bigger, cosine of phi, which we know is z over lambda, Call let's write in vector notation r sine z over lambda and then z. So this is your position. The next thing we want to do is we want to find the velocity, which is just the time derivative of position. So r dot, I'm just going to drop the vector notation. So if we take the time derivative of the x component there, what we're going to have to do is a chain rule. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So that'll be minus z dot over lambda. That's the derivative of the inside. Sine of z over lambda. Same thing, we have to do another chain rule. r is a constant. This is the derivative of the inside. And this will be cosine z over lambda. And then the z component is the easiest. That's just z dot. So now that we have our velocity, we can find our kinetic energy. And that's because the kinetic energy, T, is just 1 half mv squared. And now that we know what the velocity is, we can plug that in. So we get r squared, z dot squared, over lambda squared, sine squared, z over lambda, plus r squared, z dot squared, over lambda squared, cosine squared, z over lambda, plus just z dot squared. So I just squared the velocities. I see they have a z dot squared in all of them, so I'm going to factor that out. So t is 1 half m z dot squared. And then if we do that, we're left with r squared over lambda squared sine squared z over lambda. Those lambdas are really ugly. Plus r squared over lambda squared cosine squared z over lambda plus 1. Now, 
in these terms, I can see I can factor out an r squared over lambda squared, and I'll get a Pythagorean identity. So I'm going to do that. So if I factor that out, I'll just have sine squared z over lambda plus cosine squared d over lambda, and then the plus one, I'm not factoring anything out. And this is Pythagorean's identity, and we know that's equal to just one. So then the kinetic energy is one half m z dot squared, r squared over lambda squared plus one. And then the next thing we need is the potential energy, which is pretty easy in this case. So the potential energy is just going to be mg, and we'll use z since that's our height, because we're in cylindrical coordinates. And I think it even mentions in the problem, um, z is vertically up. Okay. So now we can do the Lagrangian, which is just t minus u which is t. This was our kinetic energy minus our potential energy. And now that we have our Lagrangian, we can do the Euler Lagrangian. So dl dz equals d by dt dl dz dot. The L by DZ is pretty easy because there's only, well, they're actually both not bad, but um, there's only one term that has a Z. So we're just going to get a minus MG here equal to D by DT. If we do the derivative of Z dot, let's see, factor out the constant, the two comes down, you get just MZ dot. Now, these are just constants, so you could think of factoring that outside of the derivative. And you're just going to get r squared over lambda squared plus 1 times mz double dot. You can divide out by the m's. And z double dot is equal to r squared over lambda squared plus 1 minus g. And that's our acceleration. Now the other thing it said is what happens when you do the limit as r goes to 0 for z double dot. And this is just direct substitution. If you do that, you'll get m you'll get minus g over obviously r squared over lambda squared. If you let r go to 0, that's just 0 plus 1. So we find that our acceleration, as we let r go to zero, is just minus g, which is what we would expect. It would just be the, the mass m in free fall. Um, so yeah, that's how you solve this problem. Hopefully it helped.